Hello, hello, hello. Wow, do we have a show for you today. If my face looks like it's jacked up, it's because I've been drinking through a fire hose. I am amazed, amazed at all the news items. And you know what we're going to try to do? In a limited time we have, we are going to just shoot story after story after story to you, have a special guest on, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The WTF moments will blow your mind today. So stay till the end. Guys, this is going to be so fun. I am pumped, pumped about this. So let me say, my name is Lewis Herms, and welcome to SBG News and Views. Please do us a favor, like, share, and subscribe. Yes, we've been tracking Rumble, and subscriptions are being deleted 200 at a time. So double check and make sure you're still following us. Don't know what that's all about. Robert would tell you AI, and he'll be going over AI today because it is crazy. crazy. All right. So speaking of the man, the myth, the legend, let me bring on my buddy, Robert M. Braley. Sir, how are you doing? Am I a legend or am I a myth? You're both. You can't be both. You can't got one or the other. No, I think I think you were a myth, and the the myth is legend. <laughs> uh, the myth became legend. I get it. I yes, get it. Yes. How are you, my dear friend? Uh, amazing. I'm just blown away at how much we're going to cover today in a short amount of time. You got the wrong cup for this day. What is this cup? This one says, "Love begins at home." Which one should I have? <laughs> I like the one with the letter on it, the golden letter. Mm. Mm. <laughs> The 17 letter. The 17 letter. Woo! Folks, please remember to visit ScrewBigGov.com to gain access to all we have to offer. And, and it is a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And it is free. That's right. We do our best to give everything, our heart and our soul and everything we can for free. So if you end up buying the products that we do, that's great. That helps us out. But we want you to be able to access inform this information because we don't think your financial situation should a be a barrier to learning the truth. And in addition to that, we will post all video clips we use and don't use on the show on Telegram at Robert's channel. That's Re Renegade Media Channel. So just download and share and share, share, share. And uh, hey, Robert, you know, a while back, you and I were just talking about this so spontaneously. We decided that we're going to show this. I rewrote a song by the Bee Gees. And called How Deep Is Your Love, if I remember that with the original title, but rewrote it as How Deep Is the Swamp. And we, we uh, through this channel and our connections, we brought in on a wonderful singer and a, arrangement, and she did just a phenomenal job. So I decided to make a video out of it. Um, let's see. This is a couple of years ago, I think, but let's see how relevant it is now, folks. We're going to play this video. This is a treat. This, by the way, this video was lost. It was gone off a of bit shoot rumble <laughs> and YouTube. And I was on, I was with Robert. And I go, let me see if I can find this in my own personal archives. And we found it. So if you like it, uh, maybe we'll repost it on those channels and see how long it'll stay up this time. Cool. Let's watch. All right. How deep is this? Hmm. Well, if you don't already know, Rob Reiner is one of the biggest douchebags in Hollywood. The meathead. And <laughs> and he's a he's he's definitely he's definitely uh, controlled by this the CIA and yep. DARPA and this is part of the Tavistock message. Go ahead and look up Tavistock and learn from that. Don't look it up on Google because you're not going to find much. You'll go to Brave or Yandex and you'll truly learn what DARPA is and Tavistock. Interesting enough, though, uh, aside from douchebag Rob, and how they're different. Oh my God, right. the blasphemy. <laughs> Now, notice what she did with Jamie Dixon and Elon Musk, right? Mm -hmm. She positioned them as they were major Trump supporters. They're not. They're not. But they're not falling in line with the leftist agenda. So now they're going to, in essence, they're saying, don't listen to Jamie Dixon and don't listen to Elon Musk, right? Because they're white right wing Christian conspiracy theorists. That's... This is the game, the propaganda. This is how they see it. This, this is MK Ultra 101. It was so fun watching this because if you know what it is, you just have fun watching it, right? Yep. You don't want to know what it is. Their spell casting takes effect and you get sucked into this mess. Oh my God. And then Trump doesn't want taxes. God, well, 
what type of crazy communist is that? Right? And uh, blah, 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 blah. That's good enough. Anyways, so it, it, was, it was fun tearing that video apart. What do you say, Robert? I give a lot of credit to Steve Bannon because he started doing this, oh, maybe two years ago, where he started to bring on the leftist media. And at first, he got an earful from his audience saying, what the heck are you doing? We don't want to hear from this. We don't want to know. And he kept defending it. And he says, listen, you need to know what the other side is being told. You need to understand it. You need to see how crazy it really is. And so he does this and every morning. He brings in, you know, MSNBC and, and Morning Mika and all the rest. He brings this in and uh, he allows us to kind of get a window, if you will, uh, on what's going on on the other side and what they're being told. And it's so outrageous and so outlandish. We sit there. We just have to shake our heads. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I think it's important that we see it. And you did a good job of uh, breaking down the MK Ultra and and you know the the way they actually do that they weave in just enough truth mm-hmm. that you can't really pick out easily uh, where the the manufactured information is. And I think a lot of people are going to buy this. They're going to say this comes from mainstream media. It must be true, and they don't question it, which is a challenge. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. But again, when we look at the numbers, uh, they're being destroyed. Yeah. By bus now. That being said, though, I did look, and unfortunately, we're, we're not as ahead as we thought. I thought we were just last week because when I thought it was only fair, I kept comparing their Nielsen numbers, but what that doesn't take into account is their Twitter and their Facebook following and so on and so forth, which is still fairly large. Right. Um, like, I believe I'm going to show something from Rachel Maddow, and she has like 10 million uh, Twitter followers, X. So... We still need to take that into account, but at least we have our counter message on X now so they can't dominate the narrative. And sometimes it's actually good for them to come out because they get exposed. Yeah. And you know what she's trying to do in, in telling you that Elon Musk is bad? She's trying to get her, the people on her side uh, you know, who believe the narrative to leave X to hurt the, the company. That's what she's really trying to accomplish. Well, and yeah, yes, and it's interesting enough you'd say that because now Rachel Maddow is making it look like it's an anomaly when she posts on that platform. Yep. Right? So she's trying to get people to move away from mm-hmm. that platform. Yep. Which, guys, that tells you that it's all controlled by one center, centered source. I would tell you I believe it's the three-letter agency, the CIA, because I know that they used to get their messaging from them at 4.05 a.m. Eastern every single morning. So – We'll see. All right. What's up next? Uh, we got to move on. Your favorite person in the world, Latitia James, <laughs> is trying to seize Trump's assets. Oh, yes. And this is from this is from Just News. They did a decent job. So I'd like to give them credit and read it. It says New York Attorney General Latitia James on Tuesday indicated that she would ask the court to seize President Donald Trump's assets, including his real estate properties, if he does not do what? does not pay $355 million and a judge find him crazy. Judge Arthur Agoron, that that wackadoodle, I don't know what, I think he was from the, uh, I think he was from the original Munsters um, show, I'm not quite sure. Anyways, uh, Judge Arthur ruled against Trump in James's case, which interesting, they said ruled against. That, That whole case was a setup and was and was pre-done. By the way, I am knocking, I'm knocking trolls out of our out of our uh, our uh, rumble today on the fly while I'm talking. It's crazy. They're just they they've got our number today. They they think they got us, but they don't. <laughs> See you goodbye. All right. Next and then anyways. So what happens is, uh, Egoron or Enegron, whatever you want to pronounce his name, completely ruled way, way ahead of time. And this is a a trumped up case, no pun intended. So James had alleged that Trump manipulated the value of his assets to to secure favorable loan terms and lower insurance premiums. Trump's legal team has fumed over the order and vowed to appeal. Tuesday on ABC News, James insisted that if he does not have funds to pay off the judgment, then we will seek judgment enforcement mechanics in court and we'll ask the judge to seize his assets. By the way, folks, this is completely illegal. It has to go through due process. It's got to have a chance to go through appeals. She cannot be attacking it if she knows there's an appeals case, which Trump came out and said they're going to do. She said, quote, 
we are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, listen to this, her arrogance. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day, she added. Now, 40 Wall Street is the address of the Trump building, which he purchased decades ago and spent about $200 million restoring. So this is a hit piece case if I've ever seen one. Uh, you know what, Robert, before I bring you in, since these two next are, are uh, exactly on the same realm as this one, let's go with the next video, and then I'll talk about the leftist judge, and then I'll, I'll bring you in, since they're all on the same subject. This is the five. Listen to All righty. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? And yes, uh, Jesse is right, especially on the on the back side of it. Anybody that's a whistleblower then becomes a target. Frankly, Robert, if we can just get rid of lawfare and everything else is going to take care of itself. The elections because, are already fixed. Yeah, yeah, good point. <laughs> Be careful how, how you use that word. <laughs> let's make them let's make them free and fair elections. Let's make them free and fair again. Yeah. But what what's interesting enough is the um, I, I I believe the biggest issue is lawfare because this is how this is how they constantly win is they they use this fake corporate law to to come after us and it's just it's scary it really is scary because you know, I've seen it done to a friend of mine I've, I've seen it done many many times and um, they put a pr person in a position like. They're afraid not to abide by their rules because if they if they don't, they are going to be screwed. Correct. So here's the real question: Are we closer now to that tipping point, that proverbial tipping point we keep talking to, talking about, with this uh, thing going on in New York? You know, if you come out and you say, "Well, Trump needs to come up with a five hundred million dollar bond that he needs to put up." in order just to be able to appeal this horrible ruling, right? And if he doesn't, she's threatening to take over his, uh, you know, to liquidate his properties. Well, already you have the CEO has been replaced. It's an appointed judge that's running the Trump organization. How much damage is that going to do, right? So the question is, are we close now to that tipping point uh, where you say, okay, enough is enough of this bullshit? And and when does the, the pushback start? We saw the truckers saying, hey, we're not going to New York. That kind of, you know, didn't go anywhere. It didn't really go very far, it looks like. It's been kind of removed from the internet. We don't see a lot of it. Maybe there's, because there's nothing happening. But there has to be some counterpunch here, I would imagine. Yeah, well, there do, does, for sure. And that's what we're working on with Remember Your Oath and yeah. all the work we're doing in, in, in other, other counties. We try to expose it, but we're only one platform, and I don't really see any other platform ex showing all the warriors that are working and doing doing great work out there. Maybe it just doesn't get them the clicks and they can't sell the product. I really don't know why they wouldn't show the warriors, but we're focused on doing that here for sure. Yeah. Now, um, in addition, there's now a leftist judge in New York, Juan Manuel Merchant, who he's going to oversee President Trump's junk criminal case in New York City. And it's scheduled to start March 25th. So check this out, though. This guy has made political contributions. So I'm going to skip by the whole story and just go to the end. He's made political contributions, according to the FEC, right? Donated to what? Act Blue, which is earmarked to, quotes. That's the judge. That's the judge that is going to be overseeing this case. It is wacky. And, okay, Robert, let's go into our next story. I know we have a guest coming on soon here, but let's go into real quick. Remember the, uh, you were kind of, you kind of jumped to this. Chicago Ray, the trucker who ignited the righteous anger of his fellow truckers and millions of Americans. Now I got this straight from Zero Hedge. He has stepped down from this boycott leadership, right? So the qu the question is, if you know Ray was Ray Ray and others were all angry about this this judgment on President Trump, and they were rightfully angry. So what they decided to do, and Chicago Ray was leading the charge on this, is is 
not deliver goods to New York in order to uh, interrupt commerce there, right? And all of a sudden, Chicago Ray is retracting everything, which is interesting. So um, Zero Heads says that he probably got a phone call or he got a message uh, on, uh, put on it, put it, put it on his wipers on his truck, something like, Hey, boycott boy, you're going to have a bad accident before your haul is over or, or something. He maybe got a phone call that says, if you don't end this boycott bullshit, your family and home will be gone when you get back home. This is the type of games they play, right? So Chicago Ray took down his videos and he posted a video fr uh, on Friday, right? And it went viral. And he said, oh, I took it down because my grand my grandson saw it on TikTok. No, you didn't. Clear, clearly, you were intimidated. Something went wrong, right? And so now uh, the Newsweek was reporting this. And on Monday, he then distanced himself from the boycott. So in essence, saying, well, I, I support everybody. And I'm, I, I, I remember I, I'm a fan of Trump and so on and so forth. And it wasn't wrong. But they can do whatever they want, right? He says, I'm not, quote, I'm not a figurehead of any movement, which he was. So it's very, very interesting. He says, I'm not leading, nor have I encouraged or am I encouraging anyone to do anything other than what they were doing prior to the ruling on Friday in New York City. Now, sorry, Chicago Ray, that's a lie. Because you actually did specifically say what they should do after the ruling. So that is a lie. What's got him so scared? I think we know. And then when he's asked, are you just getting scared? Are they intimidating you? Then he gets tough, right? He's like, no one's, no one's got to be. I heard what drivers were saying, and I'm hearing some of that today. I ain't scared of shit. I grew up in Chicago. I mean, come on. So the reality is that maybe doubts protest too much. Something happened to this guy. We're not getting the truth from him anymore, in my opinion. And this is the intimidation that happens. The deep state is getting their asses kicked all over, the, but they're still playing their same tactics, maybe even more than ever, Robert. What do you think? There's another video by him that I posted today, actually, and I don't know when it was recorded, but he was screaming mad. And, and you know, he said basically that the truckers uh, are independent. They're not part of a union. They're not part of anything, and you can't stop them. And he went on and he said the truckers can can really change this country if they decide to stop delivering. So he was he was there, and and it's really weird. Weird is the right word to say that he's coming out and saying, "No, I didn't mean any of that." The hell you didn't. Yeah. I I played the video and I posted it up on on Renegade Media this morning. I posted it there, and bombs left, right, and center. He was enraged which was you know kind of good to see we need to see a little bit of that on our side yep and i agree and it's it's too bad that something something happened he had a talking to by somebody he threatened and he decided decided to retract everything and i wish he would just say have the maybe just had come out and be honest and say you know what i was threatened my family is is at risk now i'm not going to do anything yep. don't lie and act like some tough guy because they're calling you names, right? So suddenly you're, I'm too tough for that. I would never do yeah. that. Come on, just tell the truth. Say they got to me. I get it. You know, it is, it is what it is. So we're going we're gonna to run through this real quick. Did you know your favorite person on the planet? Oh, don't Mr. even say Kennedy that. Mr. Kennedy himself? Pull him on the spreadsheet. Won't look as bad. Yep, exactly. You may be right. Yep. Interesting. Aye. All right, so let's move across the... The round, flat planet over to Ch <laughs> China. <laughs> Shanghai. And, you know, back in the day, I thought we would just we would just have to tunnel through from the United States to China. You remember that story back in the day? He yep. Still through to China. No problem. So my drill's not working. So we're going to fly over to China. And uh, guess what? The China's market is crashing. Hmm. Go figure. So one day after Beijing announced it would suspend one of the biggest domestic quant funds for aggressive selling, namely dumping $357 million in A shares in just one minute, a panic China where public sentiment is ever more adversely impacted by the country's relentless stock route, took to the latest desperate measures to prop up the market on Wednesday. So what happened is 
they have an eight point six trillion dollar stock market. That is huge, right? Wow. But their levels they haven't seen drop this bad since the early two thousand. So the the corporate structure of China is extremely panicking. So my question to you is based on history, if things behave the way they do, China affects Japan, Japan affects the EU, which affects the all of three of them affect the United States stock market. Stock market crashes, real estate market crashes, and that's the beginning of this financial reset, good or bad. What do you think? Yeah, you're on you're on target with that. Uh, you know, Fulford keeps talking about this uh, week after week after week that the financial crash is coming, and he is in Japan, so he's focused on on what he can see there with his own eyes. And the same thing, everything is crashing all around us, and, and there's no way you can have a strong market in the U.S. because it's based on all these other markets and all these uh, multinational companies that are traded on these stock exchanges. So if you lose it in China, you're going to lose it here, and it's only a matter of time now. And uh, you know with that March time frame, SGNON keeps talking about it, Fulford keeps talking about it, other people keep talking about it, that we're going to start to see that crash uh, happen here in March. So uh, this may be the precursor. You may be absolutely right about that. That may be the precursor to what we're going to experience here. Buckle up. Buckle yeah, up. buckle up, Buttercup. Buckle up. We're, in for a ri- we're in for a ride. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That is the truth. We are. Um, yeah. Before we bring in our guests, real quick, I was going to go over the story in extent, but I think I can summarize. Just so you know, this isn't what it looks like. So the administration has this loan forgiveness program that's already been in place. In fact, President Trump enacted part of it years ago, right? Now, what happens, though, listen to this, Robert. It sounds like they're doing a favor, but if you if you initially borrowed 12000 or less, Get that, 12000 or less, most students have borrowed more than that, and have been repaying that debt for at least 10 years, then you're going to get some relief. Oh, wow. Well, if, if, you paid, if you're paying on a less than $12,000 loan for 10 years, that means you're paying, you can't even pay $1,000 a year. <laughs> so, so this is a scam, guys. These are the things to look in. So, but what they're going to use this as a, as a, as a reason to email millions of people i think i think it's 3.9 million borrowers so they're going to email them saying how how we are discharging 138 billion dollars in debt well 138 billion dollars in debt uh, uh managed over over a long time with a lot of people is really not very much at all we we sneeze and send more money than that to ukraine so think about that so what they're really doing here is he's falsely pretending that he's doing them a favor, but he's going to use this email list, which they've already said, and they're going to email $3.9 million and say, here's what we are doing from you, for you. But it takes a while for this to happen. Of course, it, it wouldn't come into complete um, uh, forefront until after the election. So if you believe, I'm maddening, maddening. But nobody reads this stuff into this, and right. I don't know why. Because I saw right away, and I'm like doing the math. I go, okay, wait, wait, wait. So you have to have a loan that's under $12,000 and you had to pay on it for 10 years. And then whatever's left on that, we're, we're going to get rid of for you. I'm like, okay, if you have a loan that's under $12,000 and you're still paying on it, you don't have a financial problem. You have a mindset problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yep. you should have erased that a long time ago. Um, so very interesting. All right, let's to bring on our guests, and this is just going to be a real quick spot. Bill will be on for about four or five minutes. We have Captain Bill Jackson back on because he's going to cover something called the Hand Count Road Show. And again, where there's warriors doing work, we're going to have to feature them here because this is how we get the job done. So let's bring on Bill Jackson. Hey, good afternoon, Lewis. Good to see you, brother. Doing awesome. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing well. Nice to see you too, Robert. Saw you in the background there before a uh, single picture. Hey, Bill. Good to see you. So, Bill, why don't you let us know what's going on? You sent me you sent me a text today, and I thought it was uh, pretty interesting, and it, it looks uh, reasonable enough for people to pay attention to it. Yes, sir. Um, it's a uh, hand count roadshow. 
um, basically sponsored and uh, and 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 ran by a name a man named Mark Cook, um, amazing numbers guy, forensic uh, analyst. Um, I met him over in Florida at an election integrity conference where he was, uh, I think, pivotal with the uh, Tina Peters case and um, analyzing the data that she uh, uncovered. Um, but long story short, he's in Phoenix. And this Sunday, um, LD12 um, is sponsoring a um, uh, the road show at Pollock Cinemas, which is at uh, 1825 East Elliott Road, Tempe, Arizona. That's uh, 85284 is the zip. And um, it's a cost of $10 per person, but you're basically going to be able to meet with, um, you know, grassroots locals, uh, elected officials, um, commissioners, sheriffs, and other, you know, countywide and city officials. And, um, you know, with questions. And of course, Mark has an amazing presentation in and of itself. So I just highly suggest people to be there, attend, show up, speak up, stand up, you know, all three, the thing we keep on preaching. Yep. I, I love it. And, and folks, I've done a lot of these small events. I've traveled all over the country and I can tell you a $10 ticket is not going to pay for, for what they're doing. So um, be prepared to maybe give a donation while you're there too, if you if you can if you can afford it. But these are warriors fighting for it. You have a QR code you're going to try to put up on the screen. I can tell. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to put it up so hopefully nice and large across the screen. Now that works. Right, All right. there. You know Keep it there. I'm going to test it right now live and and see if that see if that works. See what we do for you, folks. <laughs> Let me see see if this is going to work. Uh, it doesn't look like it, Bill. You yeah. can pull it down. Let's just say the website real quick. Yeah. This is not in focus is the issue. Yeah. Right. What's the website? Focus was the issue. Yep. Well, I sent uh, Robert a link. Does he have that link that I sent? Yeah, I put it up so we can see it. Um, that's the website. Tickettrailer.com is the main website. Slash events. Slash it looks like. LD twelve GOP slash one one five four nine four five. Not an easy link to remember. No. So what we'll do? Not is an we'll, easy link to remember. <laughs> Robert and I will will put a link in our Telegram channel. So just go to one of the Telegram channels, and you're going to find the link right there. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Thank I appreciate you, you guys giving the time. And of course, uh, reminder: uh, the uh, the next BOS meeting in Maricopa County is the 28th um we're having a uh, a pre-meeting a zoom meeting on the 26th at 8 p.m so um if anybody needs information uh, what can they maybe where, where, who should we contact um well that's okay so let me be clear about that that zoom meeting is only for people that are participating so people that are going to show up to the bos meeting and and participate i don't think you want to convolute it with a bunch of people showing up because in, in fact that's exactly what i'm trying to avoid and that's why i suggested this meeting in the first place so if and how many people show up right yeah if in other words got, the people that are actually going to be there if you're on actually going to be to the bowl of shit the board of supervisors meeting <laughs> right <laughs> um then which you should be if you're if you're anywhere near uh phoenix then uh, reach out to us and we will get you a link to that Zoom meeting because we don't want infiltration in there. There's so I'm I'm gonna there's there's a purpose for this Zoom meeting and it's 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 to I won't say it here but I'll just say it'll really really help direct the way we the people should handle ourselves at these meetings to be most effective. I think that's the vaguest way I could put it without giving it away. Copy that, sir. I look forward to seeing you in that meeting. All right. Thank you. And say hi to your lovely wife. I sure will. There she is there. <laughs> she, has, she has a hand. Cool. All right. See you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. God bless. Bye -bye. Thank you, Robert. Bye-bye. Wonderful. All righty. Yeah. All righty is right. Okie dokie. Back on track, right? 
Next story. Next story. <clears throat> Let's. Uh, now you need to comment, huh? Uh oh. Let's hold on, guys. Can you guys mute yourself out while you're trying to find the out button? <laughs> okay, they're muted. <clears throat> cool. All righty. Next story up. Do, 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 do. This is interesting, Robert. So. The lovely, even if it wasn't active, imagine that thing hitting, falling right back on top of the on top of the submarine. That could have been a huge, huge issue. Uh, that would be a and, little oopsie. Yep. <laughs> and guess who was on board? The actual defense secretary, Grant Chaps from Great Britain, was on board to watch this. They called it the test. So what happened? This missile just it they it took off. And it fell a couple yards away and hit the ocean in Florida, of all places, right? Uh, so it's pretty embarrassing for the Royal Navy. Whew. I hope they're going to go collect it. Yeah, well, you, you would think so, right? Hey, Daddy, now, is that a missile that leaves like washed up on the beach? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no. It was, it was Apollo 37 from, from another moon land. <laughs> That would have washed off uh, off of the coast of New Mexico, quote wow. unquote. <laughs> um, so speaking of missiles, check this out. In North Korea, there, uh, I'm sorry, in Ukraine, there's a missile that came over and they dismantled it because it, it didn't blow up, I believe, right? 75% of the com components were from a North Korean missile. Fired by Russia. Oh, wait, wait. But 75% of the components were made by the U.S. Are, I, I mean, are, are we hearing this correctly? So you've got a Russian-fired missile, missile made by North Korea with parts from the United States. Does that tell you guys? Are you learning how deep the swamp is? And yeah. are, are you really seeing what's going on here? That, that, that doesn't even make sense. That is wacky. That's crazy. True story, too. I mean, I looked into it. It's not fake. It's, it's true. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Let's play a video um, where Tucker Carlson, I believe he's speaking to Glenn Beck about Boris Johnson. Now, remember, Boris Johnson came out against Tucker Carlson when he interviewed Putin. Right? So I call him Baby Boris. Six months before Boris Johnson... Robert Imbraelli did. He said it, it was very, very clear to you, Robert, right when this was happening, that this was all a money, money laundering operation. Is that right? Absolutely, it did. Money goes to Ukraine, makes a U-turn, comes right back. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Maybe they keep 10% according to what it... By the way, that was from the admission of Zelensky himself, mm -hmm. is that they're only seeing a small small percentage of the money. And the and that didn't include the, the money that we sent didn't include the materials and weapons and ammunition and all of that. That was over and above. And then we come to find out that they were going to the Ukraine. Ukraine was selling them to the countries that we can't sell to directly. It's it's a money laundering operation of multiple levels, not just one level. Yes, you know? I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's it's maddening. Speaking about maddening, let's move on to a day true of the Julian Assange trial. And this, uh, the trial, in essence, is to determine whether he's going to be extradited to the United States or not. I'm going to read directly from a Telegram channel called E, because I think they did a good job. And, you know, if they could summarize and do some work for me, awesome. <laughs> so he says, and this is the second part of the post. Defense has summary remarks, says U.S. prosecution is relying on the extradition treaty while at the same time attempting to ignore Article 5 of it, no political prosecution. So Article 5 talks about that you cannot ex extradite based if it appears to have its political prosecution because they know that that is going to be a tool that other countries are going to or use if somebody flees political prosecution, which if, it, if that's what it is, it shouldn't happen. So they're going directly against Article 5. So they're, what they're doing is they're they're countering their own message, but because it's all false. And this is what happens. It's almost like 
my wife says all the all the time it's easier to tell the truth because you have to remember your lies so it's a, it's the same scenario, scenario scenario here is they have to avoid article 5 because they're diverting your attention to these other articles but clearly Assange's uh, defense attorneys are picking up on this they say, and they are pretending to guarantee safety. Human history, Jeffrey Epstein inside of a jail. Do we really think you're going to protect Julian Assange, who will expose the deep state? No. So I get why, why they're fighting to not be extradited. It says the defense also argues that under Section 7 of ECHR, the retroactive criminality section, pre previous judges ruling erred in attempting to leave the legal issue wide open to resolve as a Fifth Amendment issue in U.S. courts. This point was raised yesterday by defense as well. It says Assange could not have expected in any reasonable sense for prosecution to result from basic journalistic practices. I would agree. I would agree. Defense says only hacking charge has any merit in, in any basic sense, and even then they would invoke article of the ECHR over time, in essence because he's already served time. So he's been imprisoned, again, without due process, right, for all this time. Even when he won his case, and this is what people don't talk about, he won his case, and he was denied bail. How the hell does that happen? So the defense then argues that the court cannot prosecute the press for a source acting illegally. What do you say, Robert? Well, he's got the goods, and he was man enough to stand up and try to share them. And he also had a dead man switch at some point where all the, the data was going to be released in the same uh, way that McAfee does as well. All right? So he's got, what, 31 terabytes of, of data on the government that if released would take down the government? Who he was before. But this guy was already in the, in the, in the eye of the, the public already. We knew who he was. We knew what he was doing. And uh, it was, I think it's probably a little harder to just knock him off. Right. So the end result, in my opinion, if he gets extradited here, either uh, the the Trump and maybe the good guys are going to have to get their hands on him to protect him, or he's going to hang himself from a three foot doorknob. Yeah. Yeah. And because I just I just don't see any other outcome here for this poor guy. Yeah. I mean, I mean if we can't deal with the January six prisoners. You know, it, yeah. it just seems it seems to me that that would be the easiest thing in the world to solve that. Uh, mm -hmm. And you don't see anybody in our government stepping up at all to try and do anything there, which is which is absolutely appalling to me to see that, that these guys are still in jail three years later uh, and they still haven't been charged. So you could imagine with Assange, it would be even worse. It, you know, there's no way he'd get out if he came yeah. here to the United States. There are well, a lot of protests right now in London. They, I saw the, the posters. They're inviting people to come to the protests uh, to protest Parliament for to not allow the extradition to happen. Right. That's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, imagine if he ended up in D.C. I'm sorry, uh, it's over. Julian. It'd yeah. be over. It's over. Yeah, it'd be over. Yeah. And that's disgusting to know that within inside of our uni United States, you have the corporation of D.C., and that's the way they would handle this thing. Um, so, Robert... I, we had a fantastic show yesterday, didn't we? You enjoyed that? You enjoyed that that conversation? I didn't oh have much Lord. to contribute. It was it was going on and going on, so I just kind of I I didn't either. Yeah. I mean, between <laughs> between Ethan and Alan, Alan bringing the heat, um, it was spectacular. And Ethan's going to do a follow up with me today, um, right after this show. Go to ethanlucas.com. And I'll be on there, and we're going to follow up talking about the gray hats. So, but if you want to watch the inter interview from yesterday, I suggest you go back on this same Rumble channel, go one back, and you're going to see it. It was fantastic. I recommend everybody should watch it if you missed it. Cool. So, Robert, do you have anything to spray on your face right now? No, I don't, actually. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know what this? What is this? <laughs> You got to take no, I actually do have my spray. I, I sprayed it like two oh. times already this morning. I was like, oh, now a third time. I'm going to look like I'm six by the time the show I is know. done. I know. You look, you look <laughs> younger. But I'm telling you guys that the, the uh, Numi skin is just off the hook. Where The results that we're hearing from that over and over and over and over are incredible. And then you go to this is 
knew me. And I'm just going to quickly tell you real quick, because most of you already know, mm -hmm. this is one of the most fantastic supplements I believe in the world. I'm so proud of them. I met the owners. I love the company. But Numi itself is it's glutathione. And it's they found a way through hydrostat technology that you can get glutathione in your system subliminally and quickly. So it really tells your body how to fix the issues that are going on. This That's is new, Lewis. Subliminal glutathione. No, you get it sublingually. Sublingually. Oh, okay. You said subliminally. I'm Leave thinking, wow, you just have to, to bust my hear it in the music. Down. Okay. The yeah. <laughs> we're giving you guys bust, glutathione bust right ball. now. You don't know okay. it, but we're sending it yeah. to you. <laughs> you, don't even need, you don't even need to buy it. You don't just even so, need to buy it. We, it's coming to you. <laughs> just look at the bottle and you'll get it subliminally. That's right. <laughs> now, I use it sublingually. There we go. <laughs> but let's, let's do that. So in addition, ladies... Uh, they have a, a product called HERS that's just fantastic, and the results are phenomenal. But we've got a lot to cover, so let's, let's move on. Uh, let's play uh, three videos in a row. These are from Spain and Greece, and these are the far... So that last video was in Spain, and that was the police pushing back on the farmers and beating them up incessantly. So uh, it's a battle, no matter how you look at it, it's a war. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some... Portions of it are going to be kinetic, and that certainly is uh, an example of that. That's right. And yep. they kept pushing forward, though. Yep. Even after they were getting beat, they kept pushing forward. I'm sorry. They held the ground, and which I think is which I think is very very powerful. And we have to hold our ground, guys. Yep. This is the only way we even have a chance to get through this. Is we must hold our ground and push forward. But we got this. But uh, did you show the one from Greece yet? Uh, I saw it all three. Yeah. Read it. Okay. Yep. I didn't even notice. Cool. <clears throat> but yeah, that's Spain. I'm, I'm really good with the switching. I know. We know what's going on in the <laughs> Netherlands. We know what's going on in France. <laughs> this is this is starting to be for the cabal. This is an epidemic that they are really going to have trouble uh, covering. Yep. Um, we're going to whip through these stories real quick. Just so you know, it, <laughs> lovely, of course, the lovely Jane Fonda was there. Uh, oh, <laughs> I threw up in my mouth. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Is that the lovely so, Jane Fonda? <laughs> No, that's not here, but uh, that's not her. But it's funny you put that up because this is lib on limb crime. This is liberal Democrat counselor. She was arrested and is currently being detained. You know what her crime was? A series of posts on Twitter that have been labeled anti Semitic. So, oh, a liberal who believed in all this censoring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And you know what security mi ministry said? Tom Tuggenhat? He replied to a tweet on her arrest saying, good. <laughs> I love it. Well, we did say about it uh, about a year ago that they're going to start eating their own. Yeah. And that, that's what that's what we're do they're doing. So that's fun. That's good news. Censorship um, is a slippery slope. And once it starts going in that direction, there's no end to it. Right. Yeah, so. exactly. If you're going to do all it, right, you, it's all the way and there's no halfway. There's no, I'll just censor a little bit. Right, because yeah. because they would be held accountable. Correct. So, and yeah. So what do they do? They've already they already put their proverbial foot in their mouth and or they're stepped into the pool. They're not getting out anytime soon. Yep. How true. So the border patrol union is fighting back, and I'm just going to read just a quote, a very small message that they sent to resident Biden. Dear Joe, you own this catastrophic disaster at the border, lock, stock, and barrel. The union wrote on the National Border Patrol Council account. You created it. You nursed it along. You encouraged it. You facilitated it. It's all yours. Don't run from it now like a coward. And that was signed by Border Patrol agents. You've thrown under the bus. Wow. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Because I was talking to the Border Patrol agents, and they were unwilling to step forward because they thought their senior leadership would take care of them. But what they're doing... They kind of find an end around. So the Border Patrol agents aren't stepping forward. It's the union that's stepping forward, I believe, on their behalf because their voice isn't heard. And they've been told that they would get fired, lose all benefits. And they were threatened. And I know this firsthand because I talked to Border Patrol agents. And they said, yeah, we're threatened. We're, we're afraid. We're, we can't do anything. Now, I believe they should have the courage to do it anyways. But regardless, they are being threatened. Right. Now, speaking of illegals, do you know where you'll... Ouch. 
We knew it. We've been reporting on it. Now yep. that gentleman did a good job of reporting on it firsthand. So, guys, that's what's happening in your country. Uh, I don't think the white hats are in control of the border, but you know what? There's some people will tell you different. I'm not one of them because I've been down at the border. We've investigated thoroughly, um, and I believe this is a war, and yes, I believe we are winning. But it, we're not winning because some white hats, maybe they did a fantastic job. I don't know. We are winning because we, the people, are making a difference now. There's no white hat that's taking down the mainstream media. It's not, they're not doing anything in regards to that. There's none of them taking over board of supervisors meetings. There's none of them kicking out school boards. It's all we, the people. So understand, folks, we have the power, and we need to move forward as strong as we can. And do not be afraid. And if you are, push through your fear anyways, because that's what true courage is. So, Robert, we have we have two story and a bunch of WTF moments. Guys, I know you love the WTF moments because we will not abandon those. We will show those today. I'm going to drop one story, and I'm going to keep one because Robert is amazing at talking about AI. So we're going to keep that story, but we're going to drop a story that I wrote called, Is the MSM Turning on Israel? Instead of doing what we're going to do, I'll tell you where to go. Just if you want a clue, go to the deep state apnews.com. About yeah. it. the AI is, they say, is like arguing with a liberal now. That's well, crazy. Well, yeah, of course. So uh, if you understand what AI is, AI needs to be fed a ton of data ton of data right to be able to create the answers that it creates now let's go back one step where are they getting the data from well they get it because they scan your emails they scan your text messages they scan the websites you visit uh they scan the things you post on any social media platform right so all that that data is there now let's go bring mike benz into this in his interview with tucker carlson about the new censorship industry that's out there the multi-billion dollar censorship industry so Let's look at the data that the AI is being fed is actually data that's censored or pre-washed, if you will, uh, of things that would be kind of like on our side, pro-Trump and pro-freedom uh, and, and uh, pro-country and that kind of stuff. All that stuff is wiped. So what are you feeding the AI? You're feeding the AI already a biased set of data. So then you say, okay, so now the AI is going to give you feedback, this information based on the data that it's collected, but the data is already biased. So how in the world is it going to give you true answers, especially when it comes to politics and, and uh, social, uh, you know, social issues in our country? And that's what they're looking at now. They're starting to look at this and go, hey, this AI, is, they're pretty biased. Well, yeah, they're biased because it started way back when. It's not so much the AI is biased, it's that the information that it's fed is slanted. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's what's the old story, though, right? Um, corrupted input's going to give you corrupted output. Gigo, garbage in, garbage out, yes. Right, and yeah. that's exactly what's going on here. It's crazy. Yeah. So the um, more they censor and the more they uh, take away and, and that you had the experience on Truth Social, not even be able to post anything. It's like it's censoring right at the moment of posting, which is really critical. This is a critical distinction because the moment it's posted, it would get pulled into the AI data data bank. Right. But if you can't even post it, then it wouldn't even get there. It's blocked even before it gets posted. So let's say you posted something on X on Twitter and it was up for 20 minutes, that's enough for it to grab that information. But if they block it before you post it, it's like it never existed. So you're starting to see that now happen. It, it just blows me away. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, I, I and, and I don't live in fear, but I gotta say, if, I, if I'm concerned about anything, I'm concerned about AI. Yeah. Because it's, it's already farther than it, than it, it should be in in trying to inhibit our rights, right? So it's already past that point, and it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Right. So this is a huge concern, and I don't believe in a bunch of laws, but I'm almost wondering if if there's certain things that AI AI should be prohibited to be involved in. 
it's it's an iffy subject, right? Because if if you Slip put slope. well, yeah, if you put the laws in, then you stifle the innovation. The innovation could be really helpful, uh, especially in cases of of medical um, research, right? Uh, to figure out which one you have, and it can do it in a second, where a doctor would take 10 years to figure it out. You know what I mean? It's just, so there's there's some really right. strong benefits there. And then, you know, sadly, we're seeing the negative side of it come up first, and that's not normally the case. So the internet, when it was invented, came out, and it was all positive, positive, positive. And it, the scammers didn't really start coming on until a little bit later, after, you know, about 10 years or so, uh, after the internet became a public entity that we started to see the scamming happen. But here it's starting there which is why it's yeah. a little bit scarier. Yeah, it, it, it is a concern. And when I say I'm talking about regulation, I, I, what I'm talking about is, is and, I, and I'm not saying I want this, guys. This is just a conversation that needs to be had, is maybe it could be uh, a ban from in the Internet or, or so, something in regards to news and stories because it's, it's crazy, we're, and we're seeing it in, in – uh, uh, Michael Benz men mentioned it. How it it literally is 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 taking down or or, or diverting you from a story that's correct just right. because they they want to pull you in a different direction. They don't want that information and, out. They don't want you to get involved. They don't want you to think this way, and yeah. that information gets blocked. And you know, Lewis and I were having this conversation offline. It's like we need a private app. We need something that's not in the mainstream. Uh, that's not going to be connected to the censorship industry. And Lewis said, "I have the answer." And I'm like, "Where was the answer? Show me." So it's coming a week away. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We have we have a don't say a week that is not central based and it's not server based that it's actually peer to peer. Yeah. 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 Or, or maybe there's something private too where an an X or something could create some technology and they say our our platform is AI free. You know, and because I I personally would want want we the people and supply and demand and all that stuff to take care of it. I really don't want the government involved. I'm just concerned that this can be a a crazy thing. So we need we need to move on yep. because uh, I promised them to get the WTFs. Uh, you know what? I'll just mention really quick, guys. Go to spgpets.com and get your amazing pet food. The orders are flying in. Why? Because people are getting the results. Their dogs and their cats are feeling fantastic, and the results are phenomenal. So go to spgpets.com. I really think you'll be super, super happy. And I have emails in regards to Numi and SPG pets and questions and all that stuff. Guys, try to get the information from the websites if you can because I get inundated. And I would honestly much rather work on, on Patriot stuff and making things better for, for you than answering questions on pet food and a supplement. I really don't want my time to be taken up. That being said, when I get around to the emails and I have a tons of them that I'm way behind on, Interesting. Interesting. Yes. So um, uh, we know some local farmers, and they've told my wife that organic food is total bullshit. They say when they spray the crops, they spray all of the crops. And the organic crops are right next to the other one. So I would ask these questions, of even when you're buying locally at a farmer's market, mm -hmm. I would ask these questions. So how how is your product organic please tell me the process is it is any pesticides come in contact with it are there any gmos involved in this where do you buy your seeds from they're questions that you can ask yeah yeah and pin them down because um as i've seen infiltrated at at many other type of bazaars we'll talk about sales bazaars you're going to have people in there that they're going to sell you anything just to make the sale so be very very careful um you think you're eating organic and you may not be all right now this video just flat freaked me out i gotta close my eyes for this one it really made oh, me upset <laughs> it really is it's really freaking weird it's so guys upsetting. yeah it's crazy this is supposedly britney spears i'm not even sure it's britney spears i'm not even sure it's a female and whatever it is it is jacked up in the head yeah and i want to watch this because I don't want to watch this. I want to show this. Um, I'm going to close my eyes through this, but you guys need to see this because something 
is really off, and I'd love to hear people's takes on this. Is it could even be as far as they superimposed her face on this thing? You know the way AI works. I don't know, but let's watch this. That's enough. That's enough. My That's eyes. My much. eyes. Oh, my That's, God. <laughs> it's, it's too much. Is it crazy? It's, so, I'm, yeah. I mean, I ask myself, is this real? Is she mirroring a mask? Is, is, it a, is it a dude? Has she just been so screwed up in the head by the MK, MK Ultra? Was she drunk? I mean, all these questions. And then I go back and I said, she used to know how to dance. Did she just forget how to dance? That's I, Who is this? It's weird. weird. It does look what like do a think? male, though. It does not look like a female. The hips are not they are not female hips at all. Yep. Yeah. And you know what Shakira said, hips don't lie. Hips don't lie. Really true. <laughs> really Something true. Something was different there for sure. Yeah. Tara Bull uh, posted that, huh? Well, okay. Well, go Tara. Yep. <laughs> very, very interesting. I don't know who Tara Bull is, but thank you We very much. use her top 10 list every Friday. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. So she's cool. she's cool. actually was requoted today by uh, by Elon. So apparently she's she's got quite the following there on Twitter. Good. Or good. X. Well, I I think she may have found, and I agree with Manny. I, this could have been a robot. They just haven't taught the robots how to do dance moves yet. <laughs> well, there was a story about AI um, being able to recreate entire scenes of a movie. And the, the, it's a, a new AI that they've built, and it's going to very shortly be able to do entire feature-length films, 100% AI. So you remember Toy Story was the first one that was sort of like uh, CGI? Mm -hmm. right? It was the first movie they did entirely CGI. Well, uh, we're going to soon have AI movies where you will not be able to tell with your eyes if it's real or not real. <laughs> All right, I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. Let's, everybody breathe deep. Let's bring in the good energy, <laughs> right? Because we got we to gotta expel that stuff. We have the armor of God on us. I'm done with this craziness today. Uh, although, I'm going to get into more craziness because I will be on the Ethan Lucas show coming on right after this. If you're watching live, just hop over to EthanLucas.com. We'll be there live. And it's part two about the gray hats. I think will be phenomenal. Robert, I appreciate you, folks. Love, love you very much. Uh, be here tomorrow. Uh, I don't. What's going on tomorrow? Do we even have a scheduled guest? We don't have a scheduled guest yet, but we're working on it. Okay. Now, the last time we didn't have a scheduled guest, folks, it turned to be it out to be one of our highest rated shows. So, <laughs> so show up here for that surprise, and it will be fun. We never folks, know. love you very much. Let's go to the outro. God bless. Thank you, Lewis. Love you all. We'll see you all tomorrow.